the Starship launch schedule has changed. However, it still remains very close. The Starship closures listed for Monday and Tuesday, the 13th and 14th respectively, are gone. They only have a possible closure on the 15th. According to the updated notice to Mariners, or N-O-T-M-A-R, posted yesterday, also said that Starship launch is now officially no earlier than November 15th. This is most likely due to unfavorable launch weather forecast on November 13th and the 14th. The Coast Guard notice issued for the South Texas area near Boca Chica Beach outlines scheduled rocket launching operations, warning boaters to steer clear of the designated hazard area along the flight path. On November 15th of 2023, between 5 to 5.25 a.m. and 11.10 a.m., rocket launching operations are scheduled to take place near Boca Chica Beach, Texas. Backup launch dates and times include each day following November 15th, of 2023 between 5:25 a.m. and 11:10 a.m. until conditions permit the launch. Mariners operating offshore in waters east of Brownsville, Texas are advised of the scheduled rocket launching activities and associated hazardous areas, which may impact navigation interests. Mariners should avoid all waters within rocket flight trajectories originating from launch sites in the vicinity of Boca Chica and Brownsville, Texas. Rocket launching operations high-risk areas will be bound by the following approximate positions, the U.S. Coast Guard notice states. Although 100% certainty is impossible, SpaceX's Benji Reed also confirms during the CRS-29 briefing that the next Starship launch attempt is still on track for mid-November, so very soon. Besides that, an NOTAM has been posted for Mexican airspace for the next launch of SpaceX's Starship rocket. The notice is valid from November 13th to the 18th, with daily windows running from 7 a.m. CST to 9.39 a.m. CST. However, it's important to note that this potential launch time frame is subject to change and the company has not yet confirmed an official launch date. SpaceX remains subject to stringent regulatory requirements encompassing safety, environmental concerns, and other prerequisites essential for FWS approval. Once the review is completed, which may occur this week, SpaceX will be granted its FAA launch license. Subsequently, technicians will proceed to install pyrotechnic charges on the Starship rocket to finalize the activation of its flight termination system, a necessary precaution in case the vehicle deviates from its intended course. Following this, SpaceX will assemble the fully integrated launch vehicle standing at a towering height of nearly 400 feet by stacking the Starship upper stage atop the Super Heavy booster. On the day of launch, SpaceX's teams will load more than 10 million pounds of methane and liquid oxygen into the two-stage rocket. Then it would be time to proceed. If all systems and conditions appear satisfactory, computers will initiate the command to ignite the 33 Raptor engines located at the base of the booster. After a final comprehensive health check, the automated countdown sequencer will grant the green light for liftoff. The end goal of this mission is for Ship 25, also known as Starship or the upper stage, to successfully re-enter the atmosphere and land about 100 kilometers or 62 miles off the coast of Kauai, Hawaii. Kauai is an island in the Hawaiian Islands chain located in the Pacific Ocean. Currently, there is no known payload on Ship 25. After stage separation, Booster 9 will perform a boost back burn and attempt a soft water landing in the Gulf of Mexico. If Ship 25 makes it to re-entry, it'll not attempt a soft water landing, meaning it will not splash down under the power of engines. This achievement would signify the successful operation of nearly all components on the massive Starship rocket, encompassing the engines on both the booster and upper stage, an innovative approach for separating the booster from the upper stage, a newly designed steering system, the application of Starship's ceramic heat shield tiles for re-entry protection, as well as the utilization of intricate guidance, navigation, and control algorithms. Recently posted exclusion zones and other notices give a greater indication of the trajectory that Starship will take. It'll fly slightly south of east, just over the northern tip of Cuba. Starship will then travel across the southern Atlantic Ocean and pass over Namibia before traveling over the Indian Ocean. The final piece of land Starship is expected to pass over is Indonesia before heading out over the Pacific Ocean and re-entering near Hawaii. The closest in-person viewing point is expected to be on South Padre Island, about 8 kilometers away. Despite uncertainties in the exact dimensions of the exclusion zone, it'll certainly be large due to the size of the Starship slash Super Heavy and the fact that it is an unproven rocket. SpaceX is also expected to have an official live stream on X.com. So, let's all get ready to have the best position to enjoy the event. In other important events, SpaceX has been given the go-ahead 
ahead to launch its 29th cargo mission to the International Space Station today, November 9th. NASA and SpaceX teams completed a launch readiness review on Wednesday, November 8th for the CRS-29 mission, which will send a Dragon capsule to the International Space Station. Everything went well with the review, so the CRS-29 launch remains on target for today. If all goes according to plan, the Dragon will lift off atop a Falcon 9 rocket from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida at 8.28 p.m. Eastern. If all goes according to plan, the Dragon will arrive at the ISS around 5.20 a.m. Eastern on Saturday, November 11th. As its name suggests, CRS-29 is the 29th robotic resupply mission that SpaceX will fly to the orbiting lab for NASA. Dragon is carrying up more than 2,950 kilograms of supplies and scientific hardware on this run, including NASA's AWE or AWE and Illumate experiments. AWE will study gravity waves, disturbances in Earth's atmosphere akin to the waves created when a pebble plunks into a pond. Gravity waves are very different from gravitational waves, which are ripples in the fabric of space-time caused by the acceleration of massive objects such as black holes and neutron stars. Illumate will test high-speed communications in collaboration with NASA's Laser Communications Relay Demonstration, or LCRD, mission, which launched in December of 2021. After Illumate is installed on the exterior of the ISS and checked out, it will begin tracking and communicating with LCRD, a ride-along instrument on a U.S. Department of Defense satellite that resides resides in geosynchronous orbit more than 35,400 kilometers above the Earth. The ISS, by contrast, circles at an average altitude of about 400 kilometers. Together, Illumate and LCRD will create NASA's first two-way laser communications relay system. Agency officials wrote in an overview of CRS-29 science gear. Laser communications can supplement the radio frequency systems that most space-based missions currently use to send data to and from Earth, they added. The Illumate demonstration also paves the way for placing laser communication terminals on spacecraft orbiting the Moon or Mars. The Dragon will also carry up a variety of food on CRS-29, including some seasonal specialties. And in our last bit of news, Virgin Galactic will reduce the frequency of flights of its current suborbital vehicle and stop them entirely by mid-2024 as it concentrates resources on the next generation of vehicles. In a November 8th earnings call, company executives said flights of VSS Unity, which completed its fifth commercial suborbital mission on November 2nd, would move to a quarterly frequency starting with its next mission, Galactic 06, in January. That will be followed by Galactic 07 early in the second quarter. There could be a third mission, Galactic 08, around the middle of the year, but Michael Colglazier, Virgin Galactic's chief executive, said the company had not decided yet whether to fly that mission before moving personnel and other resources to work on its Delta class of vehicles. Virgin Galactic announced on November 7th that it would be laying off staff and reducing other expenses to concentrate resources on the Delta class, which Colglazier said was key to the company's future. The company said in a Securities and Exchange Commission filing that it would be cutting 185 jobs or about 18% of its current workforce. The announcement did not provide any indications about the future of Unity, but Colglazier suggested in the earnings call that the company had learned what it needed about spaceflight operations and the experience of its customers over the five commercial flights it carried out between June and November. Colglazier said that for the remaining flights, Virgin Galactic will concentrate on higher revenue opportunities. That includes research which offers more revenue per seat than private astronauts. He said some seats might be sold to private astronauts who are willing to pay a premium price of up to a million dollars each versus the current price of 450000 He said the company projected that the Delta-class vehicles will be would be able to fly twice a week versus the monthly cadence of Unity flights with the Delta vehicles able to carry six customers versus four on the Unity. Each Delta vehicle will be able to produce 12 times as much revenue per month as Unity. Well, folks, that's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and if you'd like to support our channel even further, you can go ahead and hop on over to our Patreon through our link in the description below. Sounds pretty exciting, right? In any case, we appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.